everything you need to know about the Irish Bazooki. I, I posted a, a picture some time ago on uh, Facebook of a Irish Bazooki and, and somebody commented I thought the Bazooki was Greek and yes the Greek Bazooki is Greek but the Irish Bazooki is English um, kind of who's to blame that's what all need to know who's to blame for the Irish Bazooki apparently what I've read on the internet is Johnny Minor is the man to, to blame for all this now I've heard two different versions one is uh, Johnny Moynihan went to Greece on holiday and came back with a Greek bazooki started playing Irish music on it another version is some other Irish lads went on holiday to Greece and brought back a Greek bazooki and Johnny Moynihan ended up with it and started playing Irish music on it but the Greek bazooki is a different sort of instrument it's got a um, a flat front and a bowl back it's like a, a neapolitan mandolin but bigger like a cross between one of them and a like one of these turkish ouds or saz or something like that there's a it's a very different construction um it wasn't until i think peter abnett was the first person to make one to make a, a sort of onion shaped instrument for irish music and peter abnett's uh, an englishman his, his um he had a kind of a flat front but with a fold where the bridge goes like you get on a Neapo Neapolitan mandolin I think they had that and they had a, a three piece back uh, which was kind of like a, a bowl back but a, a simplified version um, I think it was my old boss Stefan Sobel who was the first to kind of reverse that in that he built instruments that had uh, curved backs that are flat in this direction but curved in this direction and then that had arch tops arch top like a, a mandolin or a violin uh, Stefan had an old Martin arch top guitar C3 I think it is C1 C3 mahogany spruce arch tops nice guitar and um, he copied that and put that on the, he had an old English Portuguese guitar which is a, a lovely sound but had no projection so he combined the two he had this pear shaped thing um, with a flat ish back and the carved front and he called them sit-ins um, and they're uh, they become ubiqu ubiquitous with irish music even though they're a relatively uh, modern creation 1960s is when johnny moynihan started playing them and it was the 70s when uh, Peter Abnett and Stefan Sobel and a few of us started making them. Yeah. The short history. So that's the short history of the Irish Bazooki. Uh, these days there's loads of makers uh, covering pretty much every price point from the cheap and nasty to the quite expensive and really nice. Like this. Um, Next thing you might want to know, how do you tune an Irish bazooki? I haven't got a clue how you tune a Greek bazooki. I've never even looked at one. Um, but uh, the Irish bazooki, there's two main tunings. There's GDAE, like an octave mandolin, and there's GDAD. Very similar, you're just dropping the top there of E's down to, down to D. So you've got G, D, a for apple and E for echo and you may drop that pair of E's down to a D another tuning uh, not as common is uh, tuning to A on the bass then D then A again and then D on the top Aaron Jones, who plays a 10 string, um, tunes D, A, D, A, D. At least he did last time I, I, I was chatting with him. So. What strings do you use? That depends on 
the scale length uh, you've got and uh, how robust your instrument is and what it was designed for. Uh, this is a 650 scale, which is this, the scale length that uh, Stefan Sobel ad adapted, adopted for, for his instruments. The scale length is a distance between the saddle and the nut, or the saddle and the zero fret in this case. 650 millimeters, which is long, a little bit longer than most guitars. It's the same as a classical guitar. Um, so if you've got a 650 scale, I would have uh, phosphor bronze 42s on the bass, and that D. I'd have phosphor bronze 32s on the D, so it's G, D. Nickel wound 17s on the A, and a pair of plain steel 12s on the top E. And if you're going down to D, I would stick with 12 still, you know. Um, so. Let us tell you about this one. This one's off to Northern Ireland. Um, to a lad there. It's European spruce top. Uh, carved like a like say like a mandolin or a violin. The fretboard is ebony, uh, and the frets are Evo gold. The back and sides are wenge, which is an African wood, a bit like a rosewood. It's um, it's it's similar sort of density, you know, a bit harder than an Indian rosewood, but it's it's lovely stuff. Um, that's the back and sides. The bindings. Rock light, which is a kind of engineered substitute for ebony. The neck, this is a stuff I've, I've used a lot since I've moved to Australia, which is New Guinea rosewood. It's not a rosewood, uh, it's it's a Asian paduk, is what it is. Um, it's a fantastic wood for necks. It's very similar. It's, it's often similar in colour to mahogany. It can look a lot like mahogany. Uh, Grain-wise, it's a bit more in common with a rosewood. So very nice neck wood, and the head veneers, front and back, are both ebony. You've got a solid brass machine tailpiece there for ball end strings, and this one is fitted with a K and K uh, twin spot pickup. <laughs> Everything you need to know about the Irish bazooki. If you've got any quest Irish bazooki related questions, um, you can put them in the comments below. If I can answer, I, I will, and if I can't, I'll shout. So uh, there we go.